Welcome to our service of night prayer. This is a quieter, more reflective service intended to be prayed towards the end of the day, a chance to reflect on all that's happened, to commit it to the Lord and to pray for his safekeeping through the night. So I invite you to join in with the words that will come in capital letters as we pray together and then reflect on a passage of scripture. Let's be quiet for a moment and pray. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's say it together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this evening is about King Solomon and his visit from the Queen of Sheba. We have read in the first book of Kings that when King David's son Solomon became king, he asked God for wisdom in discerning right and wrong so that he could be a wise ruler. God was pleased with him and so gave him wisdom and also great wealth. Solomon in turn understanding where this great wealth and wisdom came from, used them to honour God. And because he acknowledged God, God blessed him further. So our reading this evening is from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain it to her. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and their apparel, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe their words until I came and saw with my own eyes, and indeed the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God. Because your God has loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance and precious stones. There never were any spices such as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also the servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Ophir, brought algam wood and precious stones. And the king made walkways of the algam wood for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house also harps and stringed instruments for singers, and there were none such as these seen before in the land of Judah. Now King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, much more than she had brought to the king. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants.
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Solomon was benefiting from all he had, because he knew it was from God and belonged to God. We are told that the Queen of Sheba had heard about his greatness and came to see for herself. She was a great and wealthy queen, but was impressed by Solomon, by his wisdom, by the splendour of his court, and by the happiness of his servants. Then she says, Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God. Because your God has loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. So this Gentile queen understands that everything Solomon has is a blessing from the Lord, the God of Israel. Sadly, Solomon's wealth and his fondness for having many foreign wives in the end overwhelmed his ability to be wise and he walked away from God. The book of Ecclesiastes is probably written by Solomon at the end of his life when he realises that rejecting God and everything that he had been given had been futile. With a restored humility, he returns to God and records his thoughts, the most famous of which is that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. So what can we learn from Solomon? What has God given us that we don't notice the value of? Do we rest in God and feel the joy of knowing how we are loved, even when life is difficult? Do we turn first to God for wisdom, or do we try to do things our own way? We are approaching harvest time, the harvest from the earth and the harvest of ourselves. Are we ready? Heavenly Father, everything that we have you have generously given us, including life and new life. We thank you for the blessings of creation and for the blessings that come with the new creation open to us through Jesus Christ. When we are holding back our gifts and property, help us to be generous with what we have. When we are struggling, help us to trust that you will restore us. When we feel stressed, exhausted, fearful, concerned, or when we suffer, help us to rest in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you are here travelling with us today this night, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. And so let's pray together. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of his creation. And may our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen.